All right, all right. Shalom, first and foremost, of course, I give all praises to the Most High. Yahweh, I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world calls Christ. Real name in the Hebrew, of course, Yahweh Shai. It's your brother, Chief Priest, Allah's all my lawyer, a.k.a. the Grill of Hebrew. Back at y'all with episode 23. Episode 23 of the It's a Gorilla Podcast. Thanks for joining me. Um, You know, uh, as I speak about this podcasting is sometimes the second or third or, you know, however many priority um, in between the ministry and, you know, family and um, business endeavors and things of that nature. Right. So sometimes I can get away from it. I had a lot I wanted to talk about last week, like a lot, a lot. Um, but just with everything going on, I wasn't able to get around to actually recording the podcast. So some of which I wanted to speak about last week is because news and the news cycle is moving at such a rapid rate right now. It's not even relevant to speak about. So I'm not going to speak about it. Okay, I've narrowed things down um, to a few things. I want to talk about, of course, my favorite TV show, Power. Um, I want to talk about why Power is the best TV show ever. I want to I want to talk about that. All right. But before I even get there. I also went to see the movie Hustlers um, featuring Jennifer Lopez, Kiki Palmer, Cardi B. Um, I want to talk about the movie Ma also, which I was able to see, which I've been anxious to see since I initially saw the previews in theater. Um, very anxious to see it. Very happy I had the ability um, to watch it, enjoy it, take it in. I want to talk about that movie. Um, but before I get into any of that, the first thing, the first thing I want to talk about is the definition of snitching. The definition of snitching. I want to talk about, hold on, hold on, get my pen ready. Get my pen ready because there's three individuals I want to highlight. And we got to understand what the definition of snitching is because it's been skewed and it's been mudded. Uh, by by the perception as the generations have been watered down the definition of snitching has been changed it's been repackaged and it's been watered down and i'm speaking on this on a strictly from a street observation we came up in the street i came up in the street i was raised under certain rules regulations and beliefs now some of those rules regulations and beliefs are wrong and as i became knowledgeable and grew in the spirit of the most high and understanding the Bible, I understand which aspects of that are emphatically wrong. But some of it is not wrong. If it don't contradict the Bible, I ain't going to call it wrong. The Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians 6 and 2, right? Matter of fact, let me just read it. Let me just read 1 Corinthians. Because here's the thing about telling. 1 Corinthians 6 and 2 says, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? So like it. Let me start at verse one. It says, dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints. Right. So it's saying, why would you dare go to these unjust people, to this unjust government, to this unjust judicial system that has done nothing but unjustly prosecute our people for hundreds of years? Why would we go to that? Dare any of us go there? So that's why it's even from a biblical perspective, a problem to do this. The only time I say it's cool to go and cooperate against somebody is if they're a child molester, right? A pedophile, I, to hell with them. Lock them up. I don't care. I don't care who feel no way about it, right? Uh, like the dude testified against the cop killing a brother. That's cool also. I don't have no remorse for no police because the police painstakingly work and build cases against you. So why wouldn't you do that to them? Who cares, right? But in other instances, especially if you're doing dirt in the streets, I don't understand why you out here telling on people, especially people that you run up with, right? But then people like, we're we going to get into it because the definition of snitching has been watered down. When I was still single digits in age, when I was first getting introduced to the streets and how I go um, and, and, and doing my initial participations in, you know, the criminal underbelly, um, you, you you don't tell, period. When the cops come around, you don't know what happened. You don't say what happened. You ain't see anything. You catch amnesia. 
I understood that in elementary school. We used to beat niggas up for that in elementary school because it was instilled in us by big homies that was around us, that was raising us and that was molding us. And we took that seriously and we believed in that. I can tell a lot of people that's coming up in these days and times who are perpetrating themselves as gangsters, as street individuals, are not cut from that same cloth, are not of that same elk. I can tell by the conversations that's being had. By the hypotheticals, by the what would you do that's being had. Y'all ain't raised by that same elk. It's clear. You wasn't indoctrinated in that same manner. It's clear. Right? But your the issue is everyone's not, and people admittedly can say, well, I wasn't indoctrinated in that. I don't come from that same cloth. Right? I'm not going to say that's fine, but I understand you didn't come from that. But a lot of y'all is fronting like y'all came from that. And it's clear about what you're saying. You ain't come from that. Right? I'm going to highlight in this snitching and what is snitching conversation, three particular individuals, three rap artists. Um, of course, 6 9 is going to be spoken about. As as a uh, exhibit A, exhibit B is going to be Tay six hundred, and exhibit C is going to be Ti. Okay, um, everyone knows six nine snitched, right? There's no disputation of that. Some people justify him taking a stand against his co-conspirators. Um, there is no justification in taking a stand against people who you did dirt with. There's not even justification in taking a stand against people who did dirt on you and were your rivals in the street. There's no justification in that. You in the streets, you leave everything in the streets. If 6 9 if they, oh, they were threatening his life and da 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 and they popped his girl or whatever and they were stealing from him, well, you in the streets, nigga, so keep it in the streets. You got bread, don't you? Why don't you go hire some niggas? Go suit up and boot up and go to war. Because that's what you do when you play in the streets. You don't tell on people. Right? That's crazy. Especially niggas that you was get, doing dirt with. Them was your nigga. They was protecting you with your life. They gave you, they put a battery in your back that made you feel like you was untouchable. And in exchange for that, you told on them and got them sent up the river. That's treachery in its highest form. That's treasonous in its highest form. Right? But what is snitching? Right? We're going to talk about what is snitching. People, because the new watered down definition of snitching is civilians. Oh, well, if you're a civilian and you're not a street participant, you can tell on somebody. If something happens to you, you can tell on somebody. I come from a time where the grandmas on the block knew not to tell the police anything in fear of their life, in fear that something would happen to them, in fear that their house would be shot up or they would be killed. Where innocent, quote unquote, innocent non-street participant or civilian witnesses lost their lives. I came up in that time. Right? So this whole watered down, oh, if you're not a street nigga, you can tell, nah. I come from a time where men, women, and children knew better to speak information to the police because the fear and intimidation of the criminal organizations that control their neighborhoods made that very clear and made examples out of individuals who would do so. So snitching is not cool, period. Going to the cops, going to the DA against your own people is the wrong thing to do. We need to responsibly step up and police our own communities. See, but what do they do to the Black Panthers who offered um, that type of service, who encouraged and, you know, established infrastructure for self-policing of our own communities? They destroyed that, so you keep running back to the police. You keep selling your own people up the river to these same folks, right? Because even just the same way not snitching was developed by individuals who controlled neighborhoods and, you know, used intimidation and violence to keep people from snitching. Snitching is done the same way by the police and the district attorney, et cetera, who do the same thing. They control your neighborhood through intimidation. It's just a battle of who is going to control your neighborhood more or who you're going to follow. Right. It's crazy. So six, nine is, of course, emphatically a snitch. Um, There's no disputation of that. And again, there's no, there's no justification of that. You, you, you go and you do dirt with these individuals. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and these individuals are going out of their way, going above and beyond to make sure that you understand that they're on goal for you and that nobody is going to be able to getting no nobody's going to be able to get away with doing anything to you because they are with you and you turn around and you tell on them. So there's no question. There's no justification. I don't care if they all ran a train and bukkakeed his baby mom and put it on damn video and, and sh shared it all throughout the earth. That still doesn't justify you telling on somebody. Period. There's no justification in that, man. Your man's in him is getting ready to do serious time in jail. And you probably getting ready to be sentenced with time served. That's treachery. That's betrayal. But of course, Takashi wasn't the only snitch. You had CEO Chris, who was a part of that, who was also a snitch. You had uh, Jorge, who was working as a confidential informant, as the driver for Takashi 69. So it's a lot. Right? But there's no question as to whether he's a snitch. I want to really get into what is snitching because there's a debate online as to whether Tay 600 and T.I. are snitches. Number one, Tay 600 ran with these 600 dudes, right? When you deal with E Day, you deal with um, uh, what's, uh, uh, 600 Breezy, and all these other dudes. I don't know these other niggas' name, but them niggas, 600, right? He ran with them. Why would they say their own man's was a snitch if he wasn't, in fact, a snitch? That's, that's the first thing we got to analyze, right? And people say this. You're not a snitch without paperwork. That is not necessarily true. Paperwork emphatically substantiates that somebody is a snitch. That's true. There's no getting around legitimized, court-ordered, court-documented paperwork. For sure. You took the stand. Here's the documents. But... Just because you don't take the stand does not mean you're not a snitch. Tay 600 was brought to court to take the stand against his mans and then Rondo and um, C-Day, right? But he didn't. Then he was charged with contempt of court for not taking the stand. But he would have not been called as a witness had he not said information that was useful to the apprehension of his boys to the police. That's the whole reason he was called to the stand because he said something to the police that the um, prosecution felt was useful and they wanted his testimony on. So yes, he told, he talked to the police in the interrogation room or in the back of the squad car or wherever they had the conversation, he talked to the cops. He gave the cops useful information that assisted in the apprehension of his friends. If he didn't, they wouldn't have called him to the stand. And this is how they know, regardless of paperwork, they know because the lawyer understands what was going on during the investigation process, the investigative process, rather. The defense attorneys understand the investigative process and they understand that things were said by him and that led to him being called to court, though he refused to testify. He still told, even if you don't take the stand to get someone set up the river and give testimony for the jury, you still told because you still gave the police information about your homies. That is still telling. That is what he's guilty of. That's why niggas in his hood do not want to mess with him. Niggas in your hood are not going to put a snitch jacket on you if you're not a snitch. Your mans in them are not going to put a snitch jacket on you if you're not a snitch. Because not only does it negatively reflect on you and negatively, the more snitches in your hood, the more negatively it reflects your hood. That's a blow to the reputation of that gang by having a snitch in it, and especially an outstanding member as Tay 600 was at one time considered. So they would not be ostracizing him and blackballing him and talking about him this way if they did not have strong reason to believe he was telling. Period. So yes, Tay 600 is a damn snitch. That's why they call him Tay Snitch Honey. Even though he didn't get to the damn stand, he said something to the police, which is the whole reason he was called to the stand. Therefore, the nigga is a snitch. That is a no, no. And truthfully, to 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 try to clean up you snitching, Tay 600, what your dumb ass should have did was took the stand and gave testimony opposite of the testimony that you gave when you told the police. That's what you should have did. That would have been the best attempt at, 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 at 
or righting the wrong that you did of saying something to the police in the first place. You could have easily said, listen, I was under duress. They were intimidating me now. You know, I'm telling the truth now that I'm on the stand and I'm under oath. Because I know individuals that have done that. Let the police get them to say a little too much. But when they go on, when they get on the stand in front of the jury, they make sure to emphasize the police was crossing my mind up and they had me under duress and they were intimidating me. But this is how it actually went down. No, it didn't happen like that. They tried to force that out of me. That's why the statement says that I've seen individuals do that. And that's the best thing you could have done in that situation. So you not taking the stand in all actuality definitely submits the fact that you was a snitch. Without question, right? That's take 600 though. Let's now go to T.I. Tip Harris, who everyone loves. I remember, see, a lot a lot of people is, is got on Worldstar in recent years. Worldstar got really big probably after like 2012, right? I've been on Worldstar since 07, 08, right? I, I, I learned I was a Hebrew Israelite off of Worldstar August 3rd, 2008, right? So Worldstar... Um, has been a staple. I mean, I stopped once it got really big and everybody got on. I stopped looking. I ain't looked at World Star for really years. But back in '08 on World Star, there was a video of Ti taking the stand and telling on somebody. Right? So somebody was like, "Oh, he ain't telling nobody." Here's the thing. Here's what happened. His boy Falon, right? Remember on that um beat down low remix every week. Go to Falant, restaurant, and eat free. Y'all remember that Falant, right? Falant was his best friend. And uh, Tip had a show in Ohio, right? At that show in Ohio, they had shut the VIP section down for him. Some local Ohio niggas got upset that they couldn't get in the VIP section. Uh, a situation ensued. I think some bottles were thrown. A, a little fight broke out. They hopped in the cars. Uh, according to... You know, the, the account of the events of that night, dudes from Ohio trailed T.I.'s car, shot at T.I.'s car. Falant was killed. T.I.'s best friend. Right? So T.I. gets on the stand in the murder trial of the individual who was in the car and who shot at the car. He gets on the stand. And he says, yes, I had an issue with these guys. A fight broke out in the club. Their car followed me. Shots came from their car into my car. Right. That's telling. Even though people are, are defended by saying, well, he didn't say he shot him. Of course, he didn't say he shot him. How could he know who shot him? He's in a car. They're in a car. You can't necessarily see who's shooting out the window of the car at you. You can't necessarily see that. But you testify that this individual and you just had an issue. You get in your car. They get in their car. They follow you. He's in the car. He's the one that's standing murder trial right now. And shots came from the car that he was in into your car and your friend died. <laughs> that's telling. You're giving the full motive for as to why this individual was shooting at your car and killed your best friend. You help cement the motive, especially as a celebrity with influence. You help select, uh, you help select it. You help cement the motive. That is telling. That is snitching. T.I. is a snitch. How the hell else did he get away with having all those guns with silencers on them? He got sentenced to a year and didn't even do it. For having guns that niggas would get over a decade, get a harsher sentence than Amber Geiger just got for murdering both of Shin John for having those guns, especially as a felon with prior convictions. Which T.I. was at the time when he was found with those firearms. So, yes, T.I. is a snitch. I don't care if you like him. I don't care how much you like his music. I don't care how much you like Take 600 music. I don't care how much you like Takashi 69 music. All them niggas are snitches. There is no excuse for it. There is no justifying it or anything of the sort. Them niggas is telling. That's what telling is. Stop trying to redefine telling. Stop trying to water telling down. Niggas is telling. Niggas is snitches. Niggas is bitches, period. Niggas is not as street as they claim. And nowadays, we got gangsters who are street and gutter and murderous who are telling. But that's my snitch rant. That's all I had to say on snitching or what snitching is. That's my snitch rant. I now want to talk about the greatest show of all time, which is power. Wow. Um, let's get into why I say it's the greatest show of all time. A lot of uh, the urban community, we will say that The Wire was the best show before power came out. The Wire was the number one show of all time. 
Um, and it, it was. But when you compare power to the wire, here's the thing about comparing power to the wire. The wire has a more complex story. The wire has better writing. Hell, even the wire has better acting sometimes. In a, lar- a large part, the wire has better acting. But the thing is, the wire never tugged at the emotions. The wire never got the w- viewer of it as emotionally entrenched in the story as power has. And power does on a consistent basis, on a weekly basis. Power gets you totally entrenched emotionally in the story. Power never did that. I mean, well, The Wire never did that. The Wire did not have you at the edge of your seat every week. It just didn't. And I was an avid lover and still am an avid lover and viewer of The Wire. I got HBO now, and I still watch The Wire reruns. I still go back to season three, season four, season five, which are the best ones, especially season three, the best season. Right? But it never got you that emotionally involved like power does. The wire was real slow, real quiet. You missed things. It had an amazing plot, great writing. Again, better writing. Power does not have the best writing. Power does not have the best storytelling. Power does not have the best plot. But power sucks you in to where you put yourself deep into that universe and every single thing that happens has you on an emotional roller coaster from episode one to now. It has had all of us as the dedicated and loyal viewers on an emotional roller coaster. After last scene, I said, damn, they should have probably ended in five. Now I'm on this. I'm like, damn, they get ready to end it in six, even though they're doing spinoff series. I don't know if they should end this right now. I think maybe it should go to a seventh season. So that's why I think power is better than the wire is because of the way that it gets you emotionally entrenched. The Wire never did that. I love The Wire. I never thought there would ever be a show that could ever hold a candle to The Wire. But now I see that there is a show that has surpassed The Wire, and that's because of how emotionally involved it gets the viewer. It's got us so emotionally involved that we can't see past. Like these actors will be forever identified. And I can say that about the wire, but I was going to say the actors are going to be forever identified by the roles that they played in power. You could kind of say the same thing about the wire, but the difference between the wire and power and the characters is a lot of characters from the wire did not go on to play in other things. So that's partially why you'll forever identify them with those. Like even Wood Harris, even in other stuff, we always going to identify him as Avon Barstale, like without question. But Idris Elba, you're not identifying him as Stringer Bell. He's had so many other roles, you're identifying him as Idris Elba, right? His Who he is outlived and, and is bigger than Stringer Bell. But Omari Harwick, he's been in plenty of movies, and I'm sure he'll have a lot of big roles as a result of the showcasing of his talent that Power was. He's always going to be ghost to black people. Because of this role being as instrumental as it is, he will always be ghost to us, period. Tariq is always going to be Tariq, and he's going to have probably a great career going forward. Tasha was the girl, the dark-skinned girl they kicked out of 3LW. Now, she is Tasha, man. She's Mama Bear to this motherfucker, man. She's she's key. And as much as I hate her sometimes, right, and I don't truly hate her, but just the things that she does sometimes, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship with her. Um, but see, I'm talking about how much I hate her sometimes. There's not nobody in the wire that I'm just like, man, I just hate this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Because you weren't that emotionally involved in it like you are with power. Power gets you really emotionally involved, man. Almost uncomfortably. I'm talking about it is power. There, there's been episodes of power that have had my nerve. I'm talking about having me like uh, 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 needing a cigarette, though I would never smoke. And I don't ever encourage anybody to smoke. It kills you. Stop doing it if you do it. But it, it's had my nerves to the point where uh, 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 somebody who smokes would say, nigga, I need a cigarette in previous seasons. From the first episode, I have not missed an episode. I have not went a week without watching 
the episodes from episode one all the way to six. I've been a dedicated and loyal fan because of the emotional roller coaster. I am like a crack fiend with this goddamn show. Now, The Wire, I was addicted. I love The Wire also, but The Wire was just a cool thing to watch, man, and be a part of. And when The Wire took two years off, it was like, damn, when's The Wire coming back? But it wasn't as, it wasn't like with Power, man. Like, The Wire was like crack, but Power, man, Power is heroin, man. Power is heroin. Power is another level of a drug. I'm telling y'all that now. That's why Power is the best show that I've ever seen. Um, but just talking about what's going on now, um, you got this Tommy and Ghost thing and now they're plotting to kill Jason and that's, I mean, I don't know how that's going to go. Um, if it, it, it would be in Ghost's best interest to probably start working with Benny, to be honest. I mean, but we'll see, see, the thing is this, this spinoff is is, is is shaping up, which is Power Book 2. And it looks like the spinoff is going to be Tasha and Tariq, right? Here's my thing, though. If the spinoff is going to be Tasha and Tariq, it's going to be centered around Tasha and Tariq, I think that that means Ghost is going to die or go to prison. Because it doesn't make sense to do a show, a, a, a spinoff show for Power that still has the main character of the first show in it. To me, it makes no sense to continue on with power. Or, I mean, to, to it, my fault. It makes no sense to go into a new show, which is supposed to be Power Book 2 or something to that effect that 50 talked about, with Ghost in it. Power is Ghost Story. Power Book 2 makes sense to be Tariq's story, but with that, I see Ghost either having to be dead or in jail. Or... So far in the back, possibly he gets with the politician lady and he might become a politician. For all we know, Tate might get knocked off and go take his place. And because he's caught up in politics and away from the streets. Because he's caught up in politics and away from the streets, it kind of focuses on Tariq and Tasha. That's possible. It's all, all this is possible. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. And kind of the Tate getting knocked off thing that just kind of hit me right now. That's a possibility. There's no doubt in my mind, though, that Tommy's dead before the end of this season. He might kill Lakeisha, and he might go to prison. Tommy is dead or in jail. Ghost is more than likely dead or in jail, but there's a slight possibility that Ghost lives. Slight. Very slight. But Tommy is indefinitely dead or in jail by the end of this season. And I want to say it's probably three episodes left. Eight, nine, ten. That's it. This thing's coming to an end, man. So we got to figure out. I mean, not we got to figure out. We got to just stop and wait and see what's going on. I'm enjoying the show. I'm loving it every week. It's giving you just enough. I mean, like a good drug. This is how you can tell that a, that a skilled and expert drug dealer is in charge of this show in 50 Cent as the executive producer. Because, God damn it, he's literally giving you just enough of a hit to hold you over until the next week. To give you just enough of a hit again. But... As 50 alluded to in his Breakfast Club interview, Power Book 2, which is going to be the spinoff series, picks up 48 hours after the end of Power. So I'm very interested to see what happens. It, it might not be Tasha and Tariq at all. Tariq might get his ass knocked off, which I think would be stupid. Um, just like I think pulling the plug on Proctor early was kind of stupid. Um, I think... Now, the thing is, what's crazy to me is how this weasel Drake keeps living. Like, I feel like they should have been... They should have... Dre should have got clipped. But I mean, I don't even know, man. It's, this stuff is getting so crazy. But now with them niggas trying to kill Dre, I think he's probably going to run to the feds. But Sax is, is is on administrative leave, getting ready to get fired because of all the off-the-books operation. I mean, this stuff is so crazy. It's got me going everywhere. See what I'm saying? The Wire did not have niggas like this. I'm telling you that now. The Wire did not have niggas like this. Period. But yeah, man, I don't even know what to do, what to think. Um, with the the... I, but I, I strongly believe that the next series is going to be centered around Tariq and Tasha, um, especially with the introduction of that stripper uh, character, her daycare, being the front, how they clean the money. The other brother who's like the local drug dealer who she was working with. Um, it's 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 a lot that could happen just with that storyline with Ghost out of the picture, with Tommy out of the picture and it just really centering around them. It's a lot that could happen with that storyline, man. 
Um, and I think the Queen's Child Project will be an ongoing storyline that carries on into the next show for sure, because it's it, it become it's still relevant now, even if there's not a lot of talk about it. It it gets a, a very clear and distinct uh, mention in every episode. So I believe that it's going to be very instrumental going forward. It's kind of like going back to the wire. It's kind of like the wire that development that the B and B. Um, what was they B and B Enterprises, uh, uh, which is Bell and Barksdale Enterprises, had that development, and then right before they was about to sell, that's when Stringer got murdered in them, and then you know the politicians took it over and whatever. But it's it's kind of like got that that same feel as far as um as far as uh, what was I saying uh, as far as um as far as the way that, that it's kind of an arc that's going on, and I believe it's going to carry over to the next show for sure. Um, the Queen Shower Project, especially with how they just how we just got that um, dude who Tate was fucking his wife, just got dude to come over and and be kind of the manager, the project manager for QCP. Um, Queen Shower Project is going to be a big deal, I think. I mean, not even we're going to see how how big of a deal it is, but it's going to be, I believe, a continual story arc into the next series. Um, which is Power Book 2, or I don't know if that's the official final name for it, if, or if that's just what they're calling it, I'm not sure, but yeah, uh, and I believe Kanan is going to get, uh, Kanan is supposed to have a, a spinoff, I believe too, so it's just, I, I believe it's going to be two spinoffs, um, two spinoffs from this, uh, unless, I mean, I don't know, this, this, now this ghost becoming a politician thing is, 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 it's kind of in my mind. I don't know, man. I mean, we can go back and forth forever about that damn power. It's amazing. And, you know, most of all, I have somebody to kind of talk about, uh, Brother uh, Joel. Y'all were all from Sons of Thunder. I talk to him about it all the time and, and several others. So, you know, I, I want to kind of maybe do a full, just a, a whole podcast on just power. Probably once the finale comes, I'll set it up. So I'm, I'm going to holler at the Brother Joel about that. I think that's a tremendous idea. Light bulb. Um, I'm going to talk about the movie Hustlers. Um, before I went to see Hustlers, okay, before I went to see Hustlers, um, I was already warned that Cardi B was not prominently featured, even though she's advertised as being a part of it, of course, because she's on top of the damn world right now, um, it makes sense to advertise her, uh, but she wasn't prominently featured, she was probably in about, somebody told me two scenes, I counted four, she was in about four scenes, I don't like her to be used a little bit more, um, Maybe they shot away from using her because she doesn't have a lot of acting skills, but she didn't use any acting skills and she didn't need to use any active acting skills. She was just herself in the movie. So they could have uh, they could have facilitated her being herself a little more and featured her a little bit more, um, I believe, in the film. Um, but Jennifer Lopez, I mean, look fabulous, amazing. She's a married woman. Big up A-Rod for picking that up um, at, at, at her age. I mean. Black and brown do not crack. The Israelite woman is just the most beautiful and amazing woman that's ever existed, that could ever exist. I'm talking about, wow, jaw-dropping. She was awe-inspiring. Um, not that I lusted after her, though. I want to make sure that's clear. I admired the sister's beauty, and I and I thanked and praised the highest in heaven because he created these beautiful sisters that we have as blacks and Hispanics. But I certainly didn't lust after her, um, being that she's a married woman. I want that to be on the record. Um but what's interesting is when you walk in, now spoilers, if you ain't seen it, spoilers. Uh, initially, it, it starts in 2007. And as soon as it said 2007, I didn't know what the premise was really about. I just knew it was J-Lo and Cardi and that's all I cared about. I didn't even know Kiki was in it. So that was also a, a pleasant um, surprise. But as soon as it said 2007, I understood the plot large in part. Um because me as somebody who, you know, I know, I know, I know a few strippers in my day anyway. So it's a particular young lady who, um, who, you know, used to dance. Um, I don't know. She might even still dance. I don't know. I ain't talked to her in years, but, uh, uh, she told me that before the recession, before the stock market crashed, the level of money that strippers made was on a whole different level than what they make now, what they've made since then. She, 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 uh, explained that to me. So as soon as it said 2007, I knew that it was going to surround around that. So it's surrounded around how much money they made stripping in New York, which it, it really just wasn't New York. It was everywhere in general. Cause the girl who told me that she stripped in California, she didn't strip in New York. She's from California. So the amount of money that was coming in, in the strip club industry that was being paid by, you know, multinational corporation executives and stockbrokers, et cetera, was 
on a high level and they made a good living off of it. But after this recession and stock market crashed, it tanked and they didn't make as much money anymore. That was the whole premise, um, which was a good premise for a film. Um, I kind of didn't like that the Asian girl was the main character uh, at all. Um, and like I said, I would like to see a lot more Cardi. And I think there was, there was um, for lack of a better term, raunchy scenes that didn't need to be included. I mean, I understand adding or incorporating them just to demonstrate a very real um a very real depiction of what the strip club is like but i feel like they could have toned it down a bit honestly i feel like it could have been toned down a bit and i feel like they they kind of went overboard a bit um and there, there was definitely some stuff that they certainly could have left out but i think they wanted to really kind of really give you an idea of what this is what's really going on in these strip clubs these are what the girls are doing these are what the men are doing this is what how the men act this is what the men want etc so um yeah that was it other than i ain't got too much on it i mean you know see it watch it if you want or don't it doesn't matter um then we have um ma the movie ma wow um i've been waiting to see that for so long i wanted to see it in the theater of course never got around to it and it was able to catch it, um, able to catch it, uh, on demand now, man. And, um, masterfully done horror, very, it, it just was an, it's a, it's a new, I, I like to see new stories, right? Um, I, not that I mind remakes, but there's a lot of remakes and rehashing. You had the Pet Cemetery that disappointed me, it, things like that. This is a new inventive black, I, I'm liking to see the new the, you know, the Jordan Peele-esque, I believe, Jordan Peele was a part of this somewhere, I don't know if he wrote it, but he, he had something to do with, with my, I believe, um, but these new black stories, and you got this black girl, who's nerdy, who moves to this all-white town, and gets bullied and picked on by these white people, and then has an opportunity to take it out on their kids, great, great premise i love the premise um and 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 the sister who and i don't know her name but the sister who was the star i'm so happy that she got a star role because we've seen her for years you understand what i'm saying we've seen her from blue street she was in blue street remember when he gets out and he goes to his girl's crib and she opens the door and he's like damn girl you put on some weight and it was her cousin that was her who opened the door that put on some weight that was his girl's cousin so we've seen her have these minuscule roles, have these extra level roles or, you know, uh, minute speaking opportunities in film and in TV. For for years, we've seen the sister be marginalized to that. And it was I was very refreshed to see that she was the star of this. And I believe that she demonstrated very keen acting skills, acting. She could act a lot of people out of a job. I, I believe she needs to be selected over a lot of people who are getting roles in this time. And the sister demonstrated her range and her acting prowess and that she can be and sisters like her can be leading ladies in major film productions. And it was great. So I was very happy and ecstatic to see her just, number one, get selected for that role and then see how she acted in that role. It was great. It was amazing. I ain't going to give too much away about it. Everybody should go watch it. Great film. As far as I'm concerned. Great film. Um... I usually give a baller's review, too. I, I, I'm supposed to, but be honest with y'all. Nigga ain't been watching ballers. Nigga ain't caught up on ballers. Ballers is not as interesting to me as it once was. Um, but hopefully I'm going to catch up. Because I'm, 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 I'm really just kind of mad that they ended the previous season with this whole taking on the NC2A and the TV network thing. And they started a new season with no mention of that and just going on to him being the owner of the Chiefs. It, it it just kind of threw me for a loop. I think there's they missed out on a lot of story to tell. Um, maybe there was contractual disputes and The Rock wanted too much money, so they had to cut it short. But I think they could have stretched this out for at least one more season. Stretched out the whole taking on NC2A and uh, the, the high school prospect, Joey Bryant's son, and the relationship between The Rock and Joey Bryant and you know the TV rights to USC. I think they could have stretched that out for a whole entire season before they moved into this season of him being an NFL owner. I truly believe that. Right? But hell, who am I? But uh yeah. 
That's it for this episode, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed episode 23. It's a Gorilla Podcast. Look out for my wrestling podcast, Gorilla 316. Also, um, look for the return of Beige Rage coming soon, as well as possibly even Gorilla in the Mist being a Patreon exclusive podcast. Look out for all that. Again, we give all praise on the glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, and say shalom. <laughs>